Hey, what's going on everybody? Brandon Charleston here coming at you with another quick tutorial. It's been a hot minute since I've released a recent YouTube video, but I'll be definitely posting a lot more frequently and I just appreciate all you guys subscribing and all the feedback and things like that. It really helps the channel, helps me out, and I just love contributing to you guys and uh, it just means a whole lot, so I appreciate that. That said, if you haven't already heard Instantly, which is one of my favorite email sequencers out there, uh, they just released their version 2 of their Instantly uh, API. And so what that means is a lot more back-end customizations, a lot more endpoints uh, that you guys uh, can basically call and do any sort of customizations in terms of uh, AI agent workflows, uh, Slack channel, chatbots, you know, you name it. And so we're going to go over the API real quick on and how I would interpret a lot of uh, what I would build out. And then I'm going to demonstrate a really quick, pretty cool AI agent that's in N8N that I'm going to release for free. It's going to be in the description down below uh, for you to download and take uh, for what you want. And hopefully it could be a good use case for you guys. So let's go ahead and dive in. So um, if you go to, to developer.instantly.ai, uh, you should be led to their version two. And so like with any API docs, you know, usually you wanna give it a good look, uh, read through how it's structured, some of their endpoints, and then um, basically like uh, with their V1, you know, it was obviously rolled out uh, quite a bit ago, uh, but V2 is just uh, much, much better. And so I think instantly we'll agree here and they definitely worked hard on that. And so um, some things that you wanna consider obviously is poking around to the different endpoints um, on the things that you can do. You know, obviously there's things like create account, list account, get account, uh, and then these are the uh, requests uh, or the method, if you will, which a lot of it's gonna be post and get. Those are the two most popular ones. Uh, of course, there's other ones like delete and head and patch and all sorts of things like that. Um, if you're not familiar with API docs, definitely encourage you. Uh, there's plenty of channels out there. I have one as well, uh, a video where we talk about calls and making API calls. Really, it's kind of like throwing a football uh, with a friend. You know, you basically throw a football. They are essentially a webhook where they're going to receive that ball or that data, right? They're doing, uh, you are doing a post request, meaning you're throwing some data at somebody and they're doing well, they're essentially catching the webhook, right? And uh, if they want to make a request saying, hey, give me that football, they're doing what you call a get request, right? So in terms of data and API, API is what connects the dots for anything in the internet. And so uh, essentially when an API or a public API is released, that basically means on the back end that you can customize to your heart's content. And so uh, so anyway, the area that we are going to go into, which I found to be uh, a lot of fun, um, I'm going to definitely show you some areas uh, that was a bit tricky uh, to figure out, but you know, hopefully you guys can get some, get some good learnings out of this and uh, show you and build on top of it and show you some new ideas. So we are going to look into the campaign. And so you see this endpoint right here, we have create campaign. And this one endpoint is powerful because you can see right here, uh, well, there's one endpoint right here. You know, all of the rest of them are powerful too, but I'm going over this because I created an agent for you uh, that you need to understand how to use so that way you can use it to its max, right? And so uh, essentially what we have is, you know, all the typical, we have campaign schedule, we have uh, PL value, which is pretty much like the positive lead value for a dollar sign. We have is evergreen false, you know, which is like Boolean, true or false, right? And so we have uh, typical things that, and the thing is you're going to want to be uh, pretty aware of the different, um, you know, body and structure, things like that when it comes to like naming it, uh, any sort of thing. So obviously even this endpoint is pretty robust. There's a lot of uh, different, um, you know, in terms of the payload that you can do. And so, um, and there's other ones too that I'm going to build out uh, when it comes to customizations. But for now, uh, you can see right here, this is a very simple, it will looks to be an easy uh, AI agent, and it actually is pretty easy in my opinion, uh, but we'll dive into how it's technically structured. And so just to prove that it works, essentially the um, overarching thing that I'm trying to do here is to be able to easily create a campaign without doing any sort of the front end clicks and things like that. So in the spirit of uh, Valentine's Day being tomorrow, we're just gonna say, create a campaign, um, with tomorrow's date in the title and also add Valentine's Day Outreach. Um, we're gonna say in the email, let's have the subject line Valentine's Day Flowers. 
and then the email message should say hey first name I saw that you sell unicorn purple flowers and I wanted to know how I could get those would you be well, let's go ahead and do a new line here so would you be open to selling me some for my wife uh, cheers and much love there's so much love in the world right and then uh, we're gonna say um, let's have it send um, let's go Friday and Saturday because you know Sunday nobody cares anymore I mean unless you're delayed uh, on the on the date right you better get on your horse and uh, take your significant other out right uh, let's have it send for, and then we'll do from 9 a.m. to let's say 5 p.m. you know and then um, yeah we'll just let it roll from there so you can see the agent is uh, thinking and then it's going to use the create campaign tool which you can see is a green check that's good stuff and then we're going to get node execute successfully so if i didn't already mention it this is actually n8n it's one of my favorite platforms aside from clay uh, that you can do all sorts of different types of automations n8n uh, it allows you to create chat bots and a lot of different um, pretty substantial creative workflows so anything back end ops wise you know that doesn't require a sheet uh, that you want infinite loops things like that um, in terms of all that is NEN is definitely a solution for that. So you can see right here, campaign was uh, created, and then the schedule. You know, there's default things like that. And another thing you'll notice is when I said first name, it actually knew that because I gave it the system prompt. Right, it has context on how that works. And then you'll see right there. So if we hop over to instantly, we just do a good refresh, and then you can see right there, boom. And then oh, that's 214 2025, right? So we're gonna go into sequences, and you can see Valentine's Day flowers, and then we can have, hey, first name, and then it's all properly formatted, that new line stuff going on, you know, basically it's there. We can hit preview, and uh, we're ready to go. Oh, let's go ahead and check our schedule. Friday, Saturday, nine to five. Nailed it, all right? Now uh, I did, or I went to um, the weeds of the API, so, uh, and basically um, enabled and disabled uh, best practice ones like you know plain text things like that uh, but it is definitely worth validating uh, everything that you want to do like open tracking disabled nobody does that anymore by the way and then uh, just assigning the different uh, settings you know that you find appropriate for your particular outreach and then from there yeah you upload your list uh, of leads or you do the lead finder or however you want to do that but um yeah this is your starting point and you can see I did that all right from a prompt and it just knew what I needed to do, right? So let's go ahead and dive into how this agent actually technically works. And so that way you can uh, actually make it a lot more custom to you guys, build on it, that sort of thing. And again, this is just one tool that it's calling uh, with just the one endpoint. So obviously there's a number of different ones, which I intend to definitely build out for our agency and for clients that we work with. And so if you're interested in working with me and my team, definitely reach out. You know, we could definitely uh, help you out with that and uh, see who we can do. So that said, um, anything that you do in any sort of automation, there's going to be two things. There's going to be a trigger and an action. If you think about it, everything in this world revolves around triggers and actions. If you're hungry, that that's a trigger that I'm starving. And then the action is, should I eat a donut or should I not eat a donut or a chocolate or not a chocolate? And then... That's essentially an if, right? Because you have choices. If you eat this donut, you're going to be full. If you don't to eat this donut, uh, you're still going to be hungry. But if I eat this donut, I need to make sure I work extra hard at the gym. You get the point, right? So uh, that said, there are triggers and actions for everything. And so the trigger here uh, for this example is just a chat bot. But quite honestly, you can make this like a Slack um, you know, notification or a Slack trigger, I should say, uh, where you can interact with Slack. You could do a WhatsApp. You could do a Telegram. You could do a webhook. There's a lot uh, of triggers that you can do. And I definitely encourage you to check out the triggers uh, that are in here in terms of how you can initialize that and so even if I did so much as a slack trigger right here you could see that uh, we just do or that there's the triggers right there and uh, on a bot mention for example so if I call you know your bot and you want to 
install it in your Slack channel or your workspace, uh, you can essentially call it and then you or a team member or a VA or whatnot could say, create campaign for this and, and this and that. So, uh, and then you can look at leads up. I mean, there's just tons of ways you can go about it and interacting with an AI agent in order to uh, really manage your uh, your campaigns, your lead flow, that sort of thing, just from a high level. So, and then let's go ahead and dive into the AI agent. And so you can see right here, uh, this is the system prompt. And so I did quite a bit of um, you know tailoring when it comes to prompt engineering uh, to make it sure it's really dialed in and refined. And so just for context, it basically says you're a helpful assistant in doing the campaign actions for instantly. You must use these tools every time. I intend to add more tools as it goes. Uh, but that's essentially, you know, working with AI agents, you def or any AI for, ma for that matter, you want to give it three things. You want to give it a clear uh, role or you define who they are. You want to define the tasks and the parameters are in that task. And then usually you want to define the output, especially if they're zero shot or just one off kind of calls where there's not a lot of history in the chat. You definitely want to define the output so that way you get consistent outputs every single time and that the AI, unless you want to, the AI doesn't go on like a, a wild goose chase or things like that, right? So um, so yeah, diving into all this, basically I included all the time zones so you'll be able to take a look, you know, on how it's structured and things like that um, and take it for, you know, what it is. Um, but yeah, we did this. And then at the bottom, uh, you can see this is the variable for this is the current time. So that way if you are interacting uh, with the agent and saying, you know, send it out tomorrow, like I demonstrated here, it's gonna know that today's the 13th, therefore tomorrow is Valentine's Day, right? And so you'll be able to, uh, yeah, have the current date there uh, with that one. So that is the system prompt, basically defining who the AI agent is, uh, you know, their task and what tools are available and that sort of thing. And so this is the brain. We're using GPT-4.0 just for this example, but honestly, you can tie any one of them, you could do DeepSeek, you can do, you know, uh, Grok, you could do Claude, uh, you can do Gemini 2.0, which is legit, by the way, um, 2.0 Flash. It's uh, definitely a powerhouse. So, um, and then this is the window buffer memory. <clears throat> so on the window buffer memory, pretty simple. Uh, basically, it gives it uh, history. So this is up to the last five uh, messages as far as Windows concerned. So that way, it essentially, it knows you know, five messages back, uh, it can have some sort of memory, right? If it doesn't have a memory, it's basically just one-offs. It's not gonna remember your last text. So if I say, my name is Brandon, and then I send it again, it's not gonna know who my name is or what my name is, just because there's no memory buffer there, right? So, uh, so yeah, that's exactly what that is for. And then we have the magic, which is in the tools, which is also in these beautiful endpoints uh, that instantly is created, which is a whole lot of them, right? So um, we'll go ahead and dive in, and I'm just basically saying, use this tool to create a campaign. It's pretty much the tool. <laughs> so, and then you'll want to uh, do your header, uh, you know, your API tokens, things like that. Uh, reach out if you need help uh, with that kind of stuff. It's pretty simple to get figured out. So when it comes to placeholders and how this endpoint is supposed to be structured, uh, I did the pretty much the uh, the gist of the work here for you, but you really don't need to really, I said really twice, my bad. Um, you don't really need to change any of this because um, I basically structured it. Uh, for most of the endpoints or most of the payload that this endpoint requires uh, from a chatbot perspective. Now, one of them, such as email accounts, you know, obviously with platforms like Instantly, you're probably gonna send more than one or two. Uh, so you're going to ideally have hundreds, if not thousands, if you, especially if you work with us uh, in terms of volume. Uh, but, you know, one or two is a start. And so um, so I wouldn't pay attention to that. I just left that in there just uh, for S and Gs. And so, but um, what you'll notice here, there are single curly braces, and that is because these are what you call placeholders. And then if you go down the list here, there's quite a bit on here, but these are placeholders. So the AI understands what to put in there when you prompt it in order to uh, send the data through to get a, a good response or a 200 response, right? So you can see just for this one, name of the campaign, this should be unique and descriptive, such as February Outreach for SAS leads. Pretty simple. And then you have schedule name, you have start time, you have end time. <clears throat> And then you have the days of the week. The days of the week were a little tricky because these are what you call a Boolean, uh, which is basically true or false. 
And so in data terms, zero is Sunday and then six is Saturday. And so obviously through the middle of those, the placeholder is, I just put the day of the week just to make it easy to understand. But if I said, for example, zero and six were false, that means we're not gonna send on the weekends. And if I had one through five true, that means we're gonna send Monday through Friday. So that's how that technically works. And, and that is that, right? So I put default as true uh, for Monday through Friday. And then uh, for the weekends, I put default to false. Uh, so you just prompt the AI to say, hey, I wanna send on weekends, just like I demonstrated early, earlier, and uh, you'll be good to go. Then you have a start date, end date, you know all the typical things and then the real magic is in obviously the subject and then the body so i'm bringing this up for a reason because this is where you actually can add a whole lot more context uh, additional context that is um, on this actual body part now we can go in the weeds of like rag and you know looking up google sheets and you know copy and offer and obviously there's there's a big rabbit hole when it comes to that kind of stuff but for general sense and i guess rules uh to know that the ai agent needs to output this if you notice um i can do double curly braces right here and it actually doesn't recognize it as because you don't put javascript in here if i did that in the system prompt and i put double curly braces nan would error out for syntax because first name is not a defined variable and so therefore it's because it's javascript NAN uh, is not going to pass that through. You're going to get a syntax error. But what I was able to do is you put this in here, and then I always say use double curly braces for the variables just to really lock it down. So that way, if I say, you know, a first name or whatever, it just knows in that description that I need to put double curly braces, which you saw earlier. And that way, uh, it actually is successful, right? So take this opportunity to do that. You can do things like company name. Uh, I'm also gonna put in here like liquid syntax, like good afternoon, good evening, good night. Uh, hope you have a great rest of your Friday, you know, day of the week, that sort of things. That's, that's called liquid syntax. And so definitely encourage you to check that out. Uh, use, you know, instantly uh, to its capabilities with that because you can plug that in and those will be very dynamic depending on the day that you send it. And so this would be the place for that and then the data would actually appropriate into uh, into instantly. And so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as that's concerned. And then you can obviously you know, experiment as you, as you wish, uh, all that kind of stuff. So pretty simple. And then the output here is gonna be uh, nothing just because the chat bot by default is just gonna get back to me you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff. But ideally what you would do is if I did say a Slack bot, I would put the Slack when I call the bot here, and then I would do a post message uh, sending back to Slack because it's going back out, right? And then uh, same for like a webhook or same for a WhatsApp, any sort of input, you're gonna wanna definitely get the output back, uh, but the chatbot works as well. And so, but anyway, uh, this is uh, just the capabilities of uh, N8N when it comes to uh, AI agents, you know, just one simple use case here. Again, uh, this will be free for you in the description below. Uh, appreciate you guys if uh, you give me a shout, uh, you know, just, you know, anything to do to help you guys and uh, you get the word out because knowledge, you know, needs to be shared. And, uh, you know, this is all fun stuff. This is fun times that we have when it comes to uh, automations and build outs, things like that, right? And then uh, instantly too, props to them on a really robust, um, you know, new API out there. So definitely encourage you to learn about the API docs that they have uh, and leverage to the point. But uh, if you reach the video up until this, I uh, just really appreciate you watch to the end. Feel free uh, to reach out if you have any questions. Uh, contact info is in the description below. Other than that, have a great rest of your day. Happy Valentine's Day.